Hi, in this tutorial we look at Revit walls, specifically wall types, dynamic scheduling, wall assemblies and more. And that's coming up straight after this. Welcome to Power Search, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. This is an extract from the National Construction Code in Australia with regard to wall construction. Basically, it breaks down each of the wall components by description. Each component has its own R value, a thermal resistance rating. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create this in Revit with a dynamic schedule. Revit walls are constantly changing. Through the design process, you may be required to edit the structure and assembly of various walls in the project. Having the wall assembly dynamically linked to schedules means that you will always have up-to-date wall type details. In this example, I add a layer to an existing wall to demonstrate the benefit of this workflow. Notice how the tag and schedules are instantly updated. Let's have a deeper look at this workflow. This whole process hinges on properly assembled walls. I find poorly assembled walls all too often and there is no reason for it. Wall assemblies are not so difficult to master. The first is the insert panel where you can add additional layers to the wall. Use the up and down buttons to correct the location of that layer. In the display panel, see the blue highlighted layer moving up and down. Second, set the function for the layer. This is where most people get lost because they don't understand what the numbers mean. These are function priorities, with one being the strongest and five the weakest. Generally, this is how the functions should be applied. Lastly, set the material and the thickness for the layer. Now let's have a deeper look at assembly priorities. These two walls need to join. Notice the white core pushes through the grey core. This is because the structure layer on the horizontal wall has a stronger priority. To confirm this, I will edit the vertical wall. Notice the core was priority 2. If I switch back to priority 1, this is what happens. The cores meet pushing through the substrate and finish layers. Let's test again. This time I will push the two interior finishes into the core. These are shown blue on screen for clarity. Then I will change their priority value to number 2. Notice each of those now push past the vertical wall's weaker layers. Wall materials. Each layer should have its own material. Let's see how this links back to the schedule. In the materials browser, specify the description. This is what will be noted on the end schedule. Do the same for the mark value. When naming materials, it is a good idea to use a prefix for these materials to separate them from the finishes and remember to always create a new material rather than duplicating. Material Tags these enable the tagging of each wall layer. From the out-of-the-box libraries, you can find a material tag. Check the category parameters to ensure the tag is material specific. To create the tag, first add a label. The label should be based from the mark parameter. Transfer this to the label parameters using this button. Then set a sample value to see how it will look. Now add the tag to your project. 
Now let's bring it all together with the wall schedules. There should be a schedule for each wall type. And here is one that I have prepared earlier. Each schedule is made up of the following fields, of which all except the last are available by default. The last parameter is a calculated value, which is made from this custom parameter. Moving on up to the filter tab, we can filter wall families by type mark and this is set as a header. The sorting and grouping is done in this order and this shows how all the information can come together. This is finished off with a custom grand total. Be sure to check itemize every instance because you want each layer listed. When formatting the schedule, some fields are sacrificial and can be hidden. Starting at the top with material mark, the heading is changed to code. Then moving down the list to material, description, that heading is changed to material and cavity. The next two parameters are sacrificial. They exist only as a control and so can be hidden. The material R value is a custom parameter added to the material browser. However, that parameter cannot be calculated, so it has to be incorporated into a calculated value, which can then be used to calculate the sum total of each layer's thermal resistance. And here is the final result. Various wall types and their associated schedules presented neatly on a sheet. As shown, the information includes a detailed cross-section of all the layers within the wall type and all associated data neatly presented in a dynamic schedule. This workflow has an added bonus, wall setout plans. Typically, wall setout plans show only the wall structure. That would be the thick bold line shown on the screen. So the question is, is it possible to hide the substrate and finished layers? Let's have a look. Here is a pre-prepared wall setout plan. Notice the substrate and finished layers are lighter in colour, meaning the wall structure stands out. And this is super easy to dimension. Simply apply the following settings. Then click and drag to place the dimension. Notice the structural part of each wall is dimensioned. In Revit, the substrate and finishes layers can be hidden using parts. But this is meant to be a dynamic system, remember. And parts is anything but dynamic. So how was this done? First, apply each of the previous steps, one through to six. Then in the visibility graphics, override the host layers. Note, this can be set to white to completely hide the non-structural layers. That's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you learned something new and found that interesting. If you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. And I will see you in the next video.